What's up everyone and welcome to another video about GME. Today's video is about a game-changing discovery. For a long time we have suspected that there's been a lot of shady stuff going on behind the recent price action, but the different theories and claims have mostly been built on speculation, until now. Now there is clear evidence showing how ETFs have been used by hedge funds to get out of their mess, or at least make it seem like they got out of their mess. And today I'm going to explain in a simple way how the use of ETFs solved some extremely important mysteries about GME as well as why this is so significant for the chances of a short squeeze occurring. So make sure to stay till the very end of this video because we have a lot of important things to cover. ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund, which means that it's a fund that holds assets and that has its own shares that can be traded on an exchange. So you can buy the ETF, but you could also short sell the ETF, and this is extremely beneficial for hedge funds in the GME situation for many reasons. Because instead of short selling the GME share, hedge funds can short sell an ETF that holds GME. Then at the same time, they buy shares of all of the other companies in the ETF, cancelling out the short selling effect for all companies in the ETF except for GME. So instead of shorting GME and pushing the price down, the same effect is achieved through shorting an ETF that contains GME shares. And this is extremely useful for hedge funds for three main reasons. First of all, finding GME shares to borrow and sell short is very difficult when the short interest is so high. And also, the short selling of GME has sometimes been restricted. This may look like a positive sign for GME because it would seem like hedge funds now have a hard time pushing the price down with short selling the stock, but the ETF can easily be sold short instead, still allowing the same effect. Another reason short selling ETFs can be very beneficial is because the optic rule is avoided. The 2010 alternative optic rule is triggered when a stock falls more than 10% in one day. And in simple terms it has the effect of prioritizing long positions being sold before short selling. But when GME falls more than 10% it is still very likely that the ETFs containing GME did not yet fall 10%. Because only a small part of the ETFs consist of GME. So while the optic rule makes it harder to short GME directly, it is still easy to do it through an ETF. The third reason why the ETFs can be useful for hedge funds is the most important by far. This function of shorting an ETF allows the hedge funds short positions to be hidden. We saw the GME share price crash while at the same time the short interest also decreased. The explanation given by mainstream media was that holders gave up on holding. But this did not seem logical to most of us, because the hype was very strong and when the short positions were covered, that should have resulted in the price going up, not down. But the real explanation could be the hedge fund's use of ETFs, because the shorting of ETFs is not included in the reports of the GME short interest. So while short positions were covered in GME, a lot of new short positions were instead created in ETFs containing GME. The covering of short positions in GME did not push the price up, because it was cancelled out by the new short positions in the ETFs that were pushing the price down. The best example of this is XRT, an ETF consisting of a large proportion of GME, whose short interest reached 800% when the GME short interest was decreasing. So while it may seem like the short positions were covered, the problem was actually just moved to another asset in hopes of scaring GME holders off. Unfortunately for hedge funds, the holders of GME have diamond hands. Now this does not mean that the short squeeze is moved from GME to the ETFs, because when the ETF short positions are covered, that drives the GME share price up. So GME is still the play. And the reason this is all very important is because it proves that the short interest in GME of 78% does not give you the full picture. GME has been shorted indirectly through ETFs and these short positions are not included in those 78%. So the real short interest could be much much higher. The very reason that there can be a short squeeze is obviously because the short sellers are forced to cover. And when the short interest decreased without the price going up, that seemed like a negative sign. But that can be explained by looking at the large short interest increase in the ETFs. And that's why it's very important to understand that the ETFs play a big role in the GME short squeeze. 
But apart from being shorted, ETFs have also been extremely useful to short sellers in another completely different way. But before I explain this, I would like to just quickly ask you if you could please click the like button on this video. I work hard to make these videos and if you wanted to give me a thumbs up, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Now the other way that ETFs can be used explains how the failures to deliver could be covered so quickly without the price of GME skyrocketing. A failure to deliver occurs when one party does not deliver on obligation. This happens either by buying an asset without having enough money to pay for it or by selling an asset that you do not actually own. In other words, nakedly short sell an asset. When an asset has a large number of failures to deliver, it appears on the threshold list and whoever has nakedly shorted the asset will be forced to cover within 13 days after a 3 day settlement period. And if the naked short position is not covered, the short seller loses the right to short sell forever. And in GME, the number of failures to deliver was very high, which meant that a lot of short sellers were about to be forced to cover within a short period of time. This was great for the short squeeze, because if everyone just kept on holding when hedge funds would be forced to cover, there would be no way for short selling hedge funds to get a hold of any of the shares that they so desperately needed. And this would force hedge funds to buy and cover at extremely high prices, causing a price increase large enough to potentially trigger the short squeeze. But instead, hedge funds were able to cover without causing a huge price increase. And this can be explained by the hedge funds being able to accumulate GME shares from ETFs. Instead of buying the GME shares, which would push the price up as there is very little supply, hedge funds could instead buy an ETF share and then exchange that share for the underlying assets. At one point, 20% of XRT consisted of GME, and we can see in this graph how nearly 80% of assets exited XRT while short positions in GME were being covered. This was either an incredible coincidence, or it was the last very desperate way for hedge funds to get out of their most dangerous short positions. This again makes it seem like the hedge funds escaped the trouble when in fact they could just be stuck with a new position just as problematic but in another asset. So that means that the potential for a short squeeze in GME is still there because the short interest of 78% is still very high and because in reality it could be much higher. And as we talked about in the last video, the only thing we need now is a catalyst. In the previous video, I discussed if the hearing could be the catalyst we need. And I think it is safe to say that the hearing has in fact brought a lot of new attention, positivity and hype to GME. However, the price has not yet started to rise and chances are that despite the hearing going well, another catalyst will be needed. I am still very bullish for next week, but the most popular belief is that we will have to wait a little longer until the short squeeze is truly triggered. At the same time, you still need to remember that there is of course also a chance that the short squeeze will never happen. Some people are sure that the short squeeze is already over, while others are convinced it will happen. But the truth is that no one knows. I like the stock, but it's your responsibility to figure out yourself if you like it as well. And that is all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful and if you did and would also like to support the channel, I would be very grateful if you wanted to click like, subscribe and share as well as leaving a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm. It means a lot to me and it also helps others see this information. And to end this video, I would also like to remind you that this is not financial advice. I am only providing some information about the stock as well as some speculative ideas. You're responsible for creating your own opinion about the stock and for any decisions that you make. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.